Welcome to Thought Leader Life, where we are helping to democratize thought leadership. Join us each week where we interview a new thought leader about what it takes to become and maintain thought leadership in a number of different vertical markets. To learn more, check out www.thoughtleaderlife.com. Hi, Mitchell Levy, the AHA guy from AHA That. And welcome to episode 138 of Thought Leadership Life. Thought Leadership Life. Thought Leader Life. Man, I've been doing this too long. Okay, Thought Leader Life. All right, so I've got Aaron Levy with me. Uh, no actual relation, although at some point in time, we came from the same tribe. And uh, he is head of Cisco's Thought Leadership Service or Thought Leadership Practice. And uh, stay tuned. This is going to be an amazing show. Aaron, welcome. Thank you, Mitchell. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's, uh, it's great to have you. Uh, man, I can't even get the name of episode 138. You think I'd get that right? I think that actually that's probably the first time I got that one wrong. So in our preliminary discussions, you gave me a term that I haven't used yet, and I'm going to use a lot going forward. And that was the, the concept. We were talking about thought leadership. And what you talked about was a concept of thought partner or thought partnership. So tell me about what that means for Cisco and what you, and, and generally uh, you could start off with who you are and what you do and then roll into that. Absolutely. Thanks, Mitchell. So exactly the way I describe it, I'm taking care of the uh, thought leadership practice at Cisco. Now in the corporate world, um, I like to use more the, the term thought partner versus thought leader because um, it sounds less arrogant as well. And what we really want is not just to be perceived as a thought leader, at the end of the day, you're doing business, right? So what you want to be is you become a partner. And the reason I say thought partner is because what you really want your customers to do when they recognize your, I would say, authority in this specific area is to include you in their thinking process very early in the conversation. We don't want to be there when the RFPs are out and they're trying to find who is the cheapest or who is the, you know, has the best technology. You want to be there right there from the beginning. So they call you, you're part of their thinking process. Um, they share the problems, they share the challenges, you share your knowledge and, and your expertise basically is, is, is what makes you the thought leader. But I like thought partner more because exactly this represents exactly the stage where any corporate would like to be involved in a conversation with the customer, that thinking process about problems and challenges. That's so, by the way, it's so beautiful. And even though you've told me about this before, listening to how you explain it um, just gave me another aha moment. So thank you for sharing that. I, I, just, I just finished a TED talk and what I talked about is the difference between what we who we were as thought leaders in the industrial age society and who we're moving to, towards in the social age. And, and the thought leader, or in, in your case, the thought partner of the future is a person that's helping everyone individually, whether it's the thought leaders, the thought leaders, or in this case, the thought partner, the company to the companies they work with, understand what does the component of thought leadership mean to them? because it's very personalized and it's, it has to do with their strategy and their focus and where they're going and their client base and uh, being a partner is beautiful. How, how do you communicate that? Tell me about what does that mean in terms of the C-suite inside the company and then the C-suite outside? Tell me right. about thought partnership. Right. That, that's a great point because in an, in an essence, you need to change the conversation. You need to drive a change across the entire organization, starting from the C-suite and all the way to the sales representative um, that is out there with the customer because at the end of the day, that's how we close deals, right? So <clears throat> even the salespeople need to know that this conversation you have to do, if you want to be perceived as a thought partner and if you want to benefit from what it means, um, needs to be totally different. Now, What's behind it's easy to say, more difficult to do. What's really behind it is, and that's not unique for Cisco, that's everybody who is very serious about thought leadership in the corporate world is doing exactly that. What you need to do is to be able to provide them, again, from the CEO, your CEO, all the way to the, the last sales rep that is out there, um, some very good insights, essential insights that they can share with the customers. It's really about changing the conversation from talking about us about me and how great I am and how great my solutions are to talking about 
their field, their problems, their challenges, their industry, what's shaping their industry, something that they need to know and they don't know. Tell them something that their own staff cannot tell them and they should know. And that's what makes you really that thought leader in that moment. So I'm going to paraphrase what you just said. Changing the conversation from I, we, us, our to you and your. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Beautiful. And it's not easy. Everybody likes to talk about themselves, right? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. So you don't, I'm just trying to think about the C-suite, the even inside the company, and I'm not looking for any you know, juicy tidbits here. It's how do you get the C-suite to go, but, but we're Cisco, right? Um, how do you get them to, to talk about that way? And, and what are some of the things you've done that work better in some, for some scenarios? Like, and once again, I'm not talking about the CFO versus CMO versus you know, the CRO, but what works better across different platforms or different personality types? I can give you an example, a very concrete one. So imagine us talking to a CIO we're an IT business, right? So CIO is the, is the guy. Um, now, we can talk about what we do in our offering, basically, and then you go straight to the point. That's one way of doing that. Um, but what we could also do right now, we just concluded a study around IT talent, where the gaps are, what are those gaps? And, and the results are really surprising. The, the, the main problem is not technical, it's business, business acumen, business skills. So what I'm saying with that is that what we're doing now with our own executives is try to make sure that when they go and meet a CIO, we know that one of the main pain points they have today is talent, getting the right talent, covering the right basis, and everybody's pointing fingers at them, even their CEOs. I need you to help me transform the entire business with technology, and they're struggling with talent. So imagine that, Mitchell. If you start a conversation from that point, I know what your pain points are. Let me, sh let me show you the recent analysis we've done that is not related to what Cisco is doing. Okay, well, it's indirectly related, but it's really not about our offering. I'm just sharing with you something you should know, something you haven't seen before, right? It doesn't come from consulting firms I actually spent several months and hundreds of thousands of dollars just to make this study across six countries. And I'm gonna put it on your desk and share with you some insights um, that hopefully will give you that aha moment. I get it. That's how I need to change, right? That's what I need to do with my own people. That's how I need to evolve my talent um, scenario. Um, the business conversation will naturally follow that. That's our belief. If you do it right, um, you just got a few points here. Um, you become that partner I mentioned in the beginning. And from there, you can evolve really talking about, okay, so let's discuss how we can help you with that. And we don't offer talent, but we offer services, solutions, et cetera, that could actually help you fill those gaps while you're taking care of your talent situation based on those insights. Got it. Makes sense. So the important part then, the fundamental component is we've done some research, right? So Correct. we've done some research across multiple geography, uh, geographies, across multiple uh, technical classes of corporations. And here's what we found. Absolutely. And it's more than that. So I said it's, it's harder to do than, than it sounds. Um, research is key. And that's a rule in the, in, in the corporate world when you look at thought leadership. Good thought leadership is always based on research. And that could be really quantitative research. It could be an expert opinion. It could be trends analysis or financial analysis with numbers. Um, anything that, is, that qualifies as a deep study, source of hard facts, hmm. something reliable, credible, it has to be credible. I've seen so many bad examples, Mitchell, of pseudo research, something that looks like research, but it's really not research. It's not authentic. It's biased. It's self-serving. In other words, it's really manipul kind of You read it and you see, I, I get it. You try to convince me I need your product. That's not what I intend to read that's, here. That's not, that's not really research. That's, that's called exactly. marketing and, and sales speak. That's messaging. And I'll tell you something. Our team is specializes in the C-suite audience. And these people are sharp. The moment they're, they smell uh, messaging, marketing messaging, they tune out. You lose but them. I think, I think what, what I want to make sure I get across here is to, to, to be a thought leader, you, you have to be, I guess the, the bottom line, you have to be trusted. Or to be a thought partner, you have to be trusted. And, and what I said in my TED Talk is I focused on authenticity, integrity, and vulnerability. 
and it's very much the same in the corporate world. So you got to be trusted. You have to ask yourself, how do you earn this trust between executives, right? And, and insight is part of the game. If you are perceived as someone who is not in a selfish way, you just offer some very essential insights. You basically help them make better decisions because executives always need that. Give them those insights that they need to make better decisions. Again, these are a few points you're going to earn. I have, so I, the question I have on the corporate side uh, in terms of what you see, I get authenticity and, and integrity as a core component. It does, do you push vulnerability? I mean, it seems like you could as a sales thing, but can you, can you actually have your exact show that there are some vulnerability in certain areas, not in terms of product, but maybe, I, I don't know. I, tell me what you think about that. So I don't see this a lot. You're right. This is, this is somehow, um, I would say it belongs more to the personal world um, where an individual is trying to position uh, himself or herself as, as a thought leader. I haven't seen a lot of this personal tone in the corporate world. It's, it's a little bit more formal. Yeah. Although I would imagine at some point in time, that'll change to some extent. Maybe it should. That's how it's evolving, right? If you want to stand out, that could be one of the ways of looking at things, uh, communicating differently, more authentically. So if we're talking about Cisco having a, uh, or any corporation having a marketing voice, having a sales voice and having a thought partnership voice, I, those are, let's, let's say there are three different messages, probably closely aligned. What does that mean for the individuals within is there still room for recognized experts and thought leaders inside the firm? Totally, totally. And again, I give you an example of what we do. So we have um, a brand journalism um, initiative going on. It's called Connected Futures. It's the magazine for executives. And what we do there is exactly what you say. We bring the voice of some of those extremely innovative individuals that we know they are thought leaders in their area. And these areas could be a technology or a specific area of innovation and, and any company that's, that's true for anyone. I believe you give them the stage um, as long as the messaging are, is, you know, it's compatible. Basically we're all going in the same direction. Um, if you try to position your company as a specific thought leader in the area of innovation, why don't you bring your key individuals who are very famous, you know, working on some specific initiatives um, and it's just give them the stage, give them the microphone. They will be a part of the overall effort. But you tie it together. So I have an interesting question for you. You use the word com- combat- compatible. What you said was that we can give our thought leaders the microphone and as long as their message is compatible. Now, so compatible is a very interesting word because it, you're not saying it has to be exactly the same. Right, they don't have to be because what happens if, if it's exactly the same? They're inauthentic. It's not credible. Can't be trusted. So it, compatible just means that it is in the same, and maybe you could fill in the blank. It's it's in the same direction. Okay, okay? they're supporting your strategic direction, but it not necessarily. Actually, you're right. I agree. It doesn't have to be exactly the same way because it doesn't look credible when you do that. Um, they have their own voice. They have their own ideas. As long as you got you both of you are in the same strategic direction, it will add color to what we, you have to do. It's just another example. Make it real. That's a real story, a real person. And so, how do you communicate to your internal C-suite the need for having recognized thought leaders that have their own personal brand uh, inside the company? We use the same tactic. We use a lot of data. So there's a lot of data supporting both outside the company and, and our own data. We actually, because we have um, our own thought leadership activity for many established for many years, we can actually measure the impact. We know what's the value of a subscriber, a loyal one. We know how much uh, the, they're more likely to advocate for your brand if they're exposed to good thought leadership. We know how much, how more um, likely they are to, to be influenced in their buying decisions because they're exposed to um, good thought leadership. So in a way, when a senior executive will see the, the data, um, they will understand that there's some time that you need to use 
your thought leader or thought partner voice, and there's some time that you, you used to use your seller voice. Mm. Interesting. That's interesting. Are there some numbers that you know off the top of your head that you could share in terms of messaging and swaying customers one way or the other? If you're in front of a group of people, what, what are some of the go-to numbers you typically use? To convince them about the value of thought leadership? Yes. There are plenty of those. So there's a very good study from the Economist Group, and they talk about uh, 76% of senior executives, specifically for senior executives. They're influenced in their buying decisions, 76%, when they, um, when they see good thought leadership. 83% um, of them are influenced in, in the choice of their business partners. That's a critical decision. Who is a good business partner for me? It's not about price. It's really about knowledge. You want to partner with the best. Nice. So when you... It's interesting. I, the, the, the book that we're going to create out of these four sessions is called Being Seen and Being Heard as a Thought Leader. It, it we'll have to probably put in the subtitle uh, Thought Partner 2. Um, <laughs> so the, what does that mean from a – we'll do one more internal and then we'll go – we'll take the external voice. What does that mean for uh, – we, we've covered it, but I'm just giving a different angle – for Cisco C-suite to be thinking about when they wake up in the morning and they think, oh, I'm going to do one thing to be a thought partner today. Is that, is that your, what are you trying to get them to do to, to be and think that way or? You know, I think it comes pretty natural and that's what I discover because um, they're all very experienced senior executives. So um, when they put their, C-suite hat, um, which is normally that's what they stay with. Um, they know that it works better than any other messaging. Uh, th that's my experience when I work with them and you present something that they could use content, research content, for example, they could leverage in their meetings when they meet with customers. You don't need to convince much. They know the value because it works with them as well. They know they would appreciate that if they were in the place of the person they're meeting with. It's a little bit more challenging when you work with the field sales. And it's critical because most of these sales interactions happen with the sales representative in a meeting room with a customer. Now, we've got to make sure that they know how to use it as well. In a way, we're supporting them as well. And it's a bit more challenging because most of the salespeople are recognized not by how much they are thought leaders, but it's really how much they sell. So right. now you're competing, you're competing with quotas. And that's not easy. Thought leadership in a corporate world is really about um, building a long-term asset for yourself. You position yourself, not just a sales guy, not just someone who makes a sale or, or even I want to say, not just someone who provides an insight and solve a problem. Although for many of us, that's the final destination. It's not, there's something beyond that. And that's the, you want to become the thought partner. You want to become the one that they pick up the phone and call you as a sales rep to sit with them in the room and they have, hey, Mitchell, I have a problem. We have a problem. Let me share with you what we see here. Way before they start buying solutions. Right. Yeah, it's interesting. So part of what the messaging should be to the sales force is, well, first, if you do the research and you have the content and you could share it, and the content doesn't say buy my product. <laughs> it's Absolutely just not. here's how you can do business better. The, the, it, it, whether it's corporate or individual, it's all about, who people want to do business with. They want to do business with people they know, like, and trust. Well, how do you garner that trust? How do you garner that like and knowledge? And, and so let's talk, a, let's talk a little bit more about that. I'll, I'll just share uh, one story. I'm just thinking me personally, if it's on the personal side and, 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 and I'm sick and I'm going to the doctor, I, I want the thought leader. I want the doc, doctor who can answer my problem or know where to go if right. it's not, uh, if I'm trying on shoes, I want the best person to get the best shoes for me. Same thing on a haircut. Uh, if my company needs to switch out our CRM system and get another one, I want to talk to the best firm. If I want video conferencing, I, I want to be able to talk to somebody who says, okay, for people who are doing business like your firm does, here's the type of platform we should be using. I'm, I don't want the salesperson who's selling me because it's their product. I want the person who who is basically telling me I've seen this so many times and people like you have done this and here are the results, right? So it's, it's a different, 
it's a different sales approach. It is. <clears throat> it is. So you said it. You want to show, you want to show off your knowledge, and you want to be appreciated by that. And it's hard because everybody is competing here. So that's why at the beginning I said research is a must. And and I give you another example. So we're dealing with some of the colleges we're dealing with are pretty new, uh, and we're not alone there in the game. Now, you want to partner when you deploy something new totally new, like think about the Internet of Things, for example, or artificial intelligence or whatever comes to your mind when it comes to new. New is also risk. Now, when you deploy something new, you want to minimize risk. You're looking at partners that really know what they do with that because it's not so easy to find something like, hey, I need someone to take care of my server. Well, everybody can take care of your server. But if you deploy artificial intelligence, guess what? It's risky, it's challenging, and you can find the, the one that really knows something about it. So. In a, in a nutshell, what you need to do is go and start a research around, um, let, let, let me start to explore what's, what's really, and given another the example of, of um, the Internet of Things, what's behind it? What's really going on in the market? Not about us, not about our solutions, really about the markets, really about the challenges, why companies fail. I, this is a real example we've, we've done last year, um, earlier this year. Why companies fail when they deploy IoT? Let's go deep there and find out what is the root cause for them failing with IoT deployments. The way they partner, the way they take decisions, the way, you see this is not related exactly to what we sell. However, <clears throat> when you share that, you show knowledge, you, you show expertise. And people understand that you got this knowledge inside your company because it's exactly what we do. That's how we spend our time and money. Well, it's interesting because that was exactly the next direction I was heading is how do you get the person on the other side to want to be your thought partner or to recognize that the conversation they're having. So what are some of the things that you guys do to try to elevate either existing customers or hopefully new customers or new partners to want to, uh, it, it, in my vernacular, to want to play with you? What, what do you do so they trust you as the thought partner, not as somebody trying to sell them something? So we offer multiple ways of interacting with us. Um, and you said it right. Show up as someone that, not someone that wants to sell something, but really someone with the knowledge and very accessible. One of the ways, one of the things we do, Mitchell, is um, our thought leadership, um, I call this content hub, it's basically a website, is separate from the company. You, it's, I mentioned that earlier, it's called Connected Features. You can go and check that. This is not our website of the company, of the vendor. And we're not alone. Think about Adobe. Adobe has um, a website for the CMO, the marketing community, it's called cmo.com. It's separate from Adobe. American Express is doing something similar for um, small businesses. It's separate, for, it's, it's called Open Forum. It's separate from American Express. Intel is doing IQ. Uh, and I can keep going with that, but uh, I just wanna show you that we're not unique here. This is, this is a common practice. And, and the reason you do that is because I don't need you. If you're looking for insights, come and get insights. I'm not going to force you to, you know, look at my products and, and, and discuss, you know, my, the advantages of my technologies. You'll do it better. Got it. And, and so to answer your question, how do I convince them to do that? I just offer that in the right way. Um, sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. I was going to say, sorry, it, it cut out for a little bit because that's what the internet does every now and then. And, uh, so I was going to say, for those that are interested, it is Connected Futures Mag. So Connected Futures, plural, mag.com. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of great content there. Um, I was going to say, is there anything in particular that when I'm looking at it uh, in the past, we've talked about the future of work. We've talked about uh, IoT. What uh, We've talked about uh, one of the things I see, not just di digitalization, but I see leadership. Um, is there a particular topic that you're proud of or in terms of what you, what you guys are sharing to the outside world? Not a single one, but we actually work with buckets. And I, I give you the guideline. The guideline is any place where technology creates business value, we're interested in that. We're exploring that. Um, some of them are very close to what Cisco is doing. Some of them are not directly. They might be in the future. But... Remember one thing, when people go to thought leadership, they do not necessarily look for that specific piece of content that is related to their job today. They need to expand their horizons. They're there to learn, to become better leaders, um, you know, to know more stuff that they don't know today. So that's why we, we, we go very wide here. 
Um, you said future of work. That's exciting. Um, so we're investing a lot of time now uh, in um, original research around future of work, focus groups around the world, quantitative research, and a lot of experts are collaborating with us in creating those assets. <clears throat> the future of the IT world, the future of IT in general, um, what automation, what AI is doing to the world of technology today. Um, we know it's going to look very differently from the way it looks today. That's another bucket. Um, we look a lot at industries. What technology does to industries? Retail. It's fascinating. Sport entertainment. Um, manufacturing was one of the first to adopt automation. Um, others are more um, uh, late adopters when it comes to uh, automation or, or, or AI. So we're looking at different industries to try to understand what digitization is doing to them. How does it look like? What does it mean for them? Where are the risks? Where are the growth opportunities? All these topics when it comes to technology, that's what we love. Yeah, it's interesting. I, having lived and worked in, in Silicon Valley for 30 years, what I often see is the, the industry will shift and the world will eventually shift. And there are some people who just don't stay on top of it and they kind of disappear. And, and what you're trying to do, and by the way, people and companies. <laughs> and so uh, what you're trying to do is, is, is have a playing ground where people could see where the future might be going and Correct. try try their best to make sure they don't disappear. <laughs> so, And there's a rule that applies to any corporate thought leadership. And I think you see it here. When you limit your thought leadership to those areas where your company is playing, right? Specific, it, it is sooner or later it will be perceived as self-serving. It's not going to be that authentic. It's going to be that natural. It's not going to be that helpful for your audience to consume and realize, you know, Mitchell is doing a great job. I, I, I keep using that. I'm, I'm, you know, counting on your insights, I make better decisions based on that. Um, it's not going to happen because when you narrow the, the this down to only the, the specific areas of interest of your corporate, um, it's really damaging the thought leadership. The best way to do is really um, go really wide, um, broad, because that's what people expect from thought leadership. Um, of course, it's about the quality, the depth of knowledge that you're sharing, but you shouldn't limit yourself to the areas where you play because it doesn't look good. Yeah, fascinating. This is really interesting. I uh, I uh, love love the conversation and the and the thought process. And I I'd say many companies need to focus on thought partnership. I think that's a that's an interesting definition. Give it. Give me a one sentence definition of thought partnership. We did it at the beginning, but now summarize what you heard. In a very short way, this is about being perceived as the partner for their thinking process, the initial thinking process. Not, not a partner? So the partner versus a partner? Or am I... You want to be the best. A, it, one of the... Okay. I just was just checking, you know. If you're perfect at what you do, then you're the partner. Um, and if you only have time for one, you get to choose the partner. Uh, it is probably I, I one. If, if we're to. trying to be the best, then it's the partner. Yeah. Right. I agree. Gotcha. Is there a question I should have, by the way, this is great. Um, uh, it always goes super quickly and extremely valuable content. Is there a question that I should have asked you that I shouldn't have, or is there a way you'd want to wrap up this, this session? Let me think. So, um, We did talk about what makes good and bad thought leadership, and I think it's important because I see lots of good examples, but also a lot of bad examples. Um, <clears throat> with, in a corporate world, I think thought leadership drives a lot of change, and we covered the, um, um, what it means to go all the way from your C-suite to the last person that is out there in the field interacting with customers and changing their mindset. Um, everything that is under the hood, that is a lot of research going on just to be able to provide, to say something smart and useful for your audience. Um, and above all this, it is a change process. It's, it goes against the uh, natural instincts of sales, focus on what I can sell today, it goes against natural instincts of marketing. So it's, it's, not, an, it, it's not smooth sailing in, in corporates. Got it. I, and uh, nice wrap up. I don't disagree. It's part of the industrial age society 
has forced companies in a certain way of living. And the social age, which we're moving towards, by the way, I think we're only halfway there. The social age we're moving toward is a much different vehicle. And I think thought partnership is a great way to help companies move in that direction. Uh, if people need to reach out to you or learn more, what's the best way to do that? Um, I'll probably go to Connected Futures. Um, that's where in the about page, we're all there. It's the entire team. Uh, so you can see me and the entire team there. Um, right now, we don't have our Connected Futures emails there, although we should. So that's, you know, thank you for mentioning that. That's one thing we may want to have in the future. Uh, but other than that, that's really the best way. I, I actually, other than uh, make sure you get the 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 bots and the and the spam stuff out, I it, you won't get uh, inundated with lots of spam. You'll get people who are interested in who you are and what you do. Um, so I like it. So go to connectedfuturesmag dot uh, com. Uh, take a look at the content. Sign up. Uh, become a subscriber just so you can see what's what's coming out of the area. Um, I like this conversation. I spend a lot of time. Uh, in companies helping helping experts become recognized thought leaders, a lot of what we do though are the smaller companies that end up having a handful of people versus larger companies like Cisco, where there are thousands of people that could be uh, thought leaders. So it's a it's an interesting world. It's great to hear that direction. And, and honestly, I hadn't heard the word thought partner for what it's worth before. Love it. <laughs> so going to be using it. Really appreciate it. Uh, for those interested in reaching out to me, uh, the best way, just Google my name, Mitchell Levy. Uh, I'll be in five of the top 10 places and connect to me on social, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Google+. Plus. I'm, I'm playing with Snap at the moment, Instagram. So whatever platform is appropriate for you, I'm happy, happy to connect. Um, if you like Thought With Your Life, uh, reach out. Um, we have had uh, Aaron, this is so amazing when I had people come to me and quote different episode numbers of Thought Leader Life. I'm like, really? I don't think I remember what I said in the, in the episodes, uh, but I appreciate that. Uh, you've been a great audience. Aaron, you've been fantastic. Uh, this is Aaron Levy, uh, basically directing, focusing, leading the thought leadership practice over at Cisco. It's been an honor to talk to you. Thank you so much. And thanks, everyone, for, for watching and listening. Look forward to seeing you at the next episode a thought leader life. Take care. Bye now. Thank you, Mitchell. Bye. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Thought Leader Life. Please subscribe to us on YouTube and activate us by going to thoughtleaderlife.com slash activate. Till next time.